All right, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for coming to Share Faith Academy's special webinar on church websites. And uh, looking forward to the discussion today. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for coming out. Just want to let you guys know if you haven't been to one of these webinars before. Uh, my name is Zach, and uh, here at Share Faith, we cover a lot of uh, different resources that churches use uh, throughout their day-to-day -day purposes. And uh, just so you're familiar with what's on the screen in front of you, uh, you should see the video that has me on it. Down below, you'll find a chat area uh, where one of our Share Faith Academy reps is down there. Uh, Chris is the one who's going to be helping you guys answering your questions for you today. So feel free to say hi to him. Uh, let us know where you're coming in from, maybe what city and state you guys are tuning in from. Uh, and definitely check it out. If you guys have any questions at all or any comments that come up throughout the time of the webinar, feel free to hop in there with those. Chris will do his best to field those and answer them for you. At the very end of the webinar, we will have some time for a live Q&A, so you guys will be able to ask questions, and I'll do my best to cover those for you uh, through here. I only ask that you do uh, try to keep the questions related to the content that's here, just so everybody can benefit from it. So uh, just things pertaining to church websites. If you guys have any specific questions, uh, if you're running into any Thing with yours uh, in particular uh, that maybe you need some additional help with. We do have a support team uh, that we can get in contact with you later on if that's the case. Uh, but for now, I want to go ahead and start us off in prayer and we'll kick things off. Father God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for everyone who's tuning in today, and I pray that the information here will be fruitful, that we can understand what we need to do in order to make uh, the church websites, any tools that we have at our disposal, Lord, ultimately in ministry, that we would use them for the sake of ministry, that they would help us to uh, be more effective at communicating, at outreach, and ultimately just spreading your gospel throughout the world. We thank you, Father, and we ask that you would bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll pull up uh, something on my screen here and let you guys see it. All right. So first of all, I'll go through and discuss what we are going to talk about today throughout the webinar, our agenda. So uh, first of all, I do want to just give you guys a little bit of uh, uh, background on who ShareFaith is and what we're about. After that, though, we'll get into the discussion of what the purpose of a website really is. Like, do you really need one? What is the impact that it has and the outreach potential that's available through it? From there, we'll discuss some things that can help you before you get started, whether you're in the process of building a brand new website or whether you're in uh, thinking about maybe overhauling the one you have or making some decent changes to it, whatever case you might be in, then uh, we'll go through, just give you guys some helpful things that can be mindful of as you are getting prepared for this situation. And then uh, from there, we'll talk about the basics that every church website ought to have, some, some basic needs, some things that you should make sure that you are mindful of uh, with content that you're putting on your website. And then after that, uh, I do have some example sites that I'm going to show you guys, so a few, uh, few different real church websites, and we'll see some of the things that, uh, you know, we really can look at and say, you know, what they're, what they're doing that's being really effective, and we'll also uh, kind of take a look and see what might, you know, what suggestions we might have that might help improve things even more for them. And then we'll have some final thoughts uh, just on, dis on discussions with church websites and ways that you can start over with a clean slate. And then finally, we'll have the live Q&A session, so we'll stay on for, some, uh, for a little while so you guys can ask us some questions in real time. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the webinar presentation that I have for you. So this, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about ShareFaith, just so you guys kind of know who, uh, who you're talking with here and who's uh, covering these different things. So... Uh, ShareFaith is one of the most trusted resource providers for churches around the world. Uh, we've been around a long time. Our mission has always been to partner with churches globally in expanding their outreach and proclaiming the gospel. We see what we do as part of the bigger picture of really helping people advance the kingdom and utilizing Christian resources to promote a Christian message and, and save and uh, you know ultimately to, to help others uh, work together to save, save people, to save the lost. So... Now, uh, as I mentioned, we have been around for a long time, and we are a global family of churches. ShareFaith 
uh, has had the privilege over the past uh, 10 years to be able to serve over 100,000 churches in 160 different countries, So, which is phenomenal to think that um, you know, that they've spread so far, but, you know, it's amazing that nowadays we actually have over 8,000 church websites, and that continues to grow, so a lot of churches have their website through ShareFaith and trust ShareFaith as their resource provider for websites and other media. All right, so that's, well, you know, I won't, I won't go on about us right now. The thing I want to talk about is church websites and what we can do to help you as you are getting started. Now, before you actually start working on the site, uh, there are some steps that can help you with your process to make sure that you're staying on track and as you're working and making your changes. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is pitfalls to avoid. So as you're going through and, and getting everything ready, these are just some things to keep in mind so that way you don't lose sight of what's, what's happening. So uh, lose sight of what's going on as you're, as you're putting things together. So some common mistakes we'll talk about here. Now, the first one, and this is really something that, that all too often happens, and this is probably one of the biggest ones that's going to be a hindrance to you later down the road, uh, this question needs to come up as you're working on your site. Can people find your website? So what I'm talking about with that is in terms of search engines, uh, how are people able to run across your church when they're looking for churches in their area if they're going online to do it, which nowadays we see that more and more people are doing so. Um, in fact, you know, so there's different statistics out there, but a lot of them will say that roughly 30 to 40 percent of people say that they actually uh, first came to visit a church because they came to the website first. And that's actually a little bit older statistics. That's from a couple years ago. So we might even uh, see now if there was a new study shown to, to say that I wouldn't be surprised if that's, if that's gone up exponentially. Uh, just because I know so many people will say that one of the first things they'll look at uh, for a church is their church website. So making sure that your website is search engine friendly, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and uh, also, by the way, just so you guys know, I'm going to have some information and resources for you too. So uh, all those folks here who are attending the webinar today will follow up with you guys so you get some more information to help you after we've discussed these things as well. And then uh, on top of search engines, another biggie that churches uh, can take for granted sometimes is what is your domain name? And so that means something like, you know, if your domain name is, is essentially the address to your website, like www.mychurch.com, you know, whatever your domain name is to your church. I've seen some domains that are very confusing. Uh, people who have maybe their, their ministry has a long name and they try to abbreviate the whole thing and turn it into a domain name, or even if they just try to spell the whole thing out. I've seen some where people will put hyphens in between every word of their name. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, it, it's just something where, sure, like maybe it's specific to you, uh, but ultimately it could be a problem for people who are trying to just type it in to get there or find you uh, some, some means online, or if they're trying to think what your website could be, try to think of something that's uh, practical that people are going to remember. Now, aside from people finding your site, uh, you also need to think about what people are reading between the lines, meaning not just the information that you have on your website, but what's the design going to be like and how is it going to help them as they're trying to find information on there. We're going to talk a lot about that uh, more in detail here in a little bit. Also, making sure that content is current and relevant. This is a big one that churches are notorious for, setting up websites and then leaving them. And so we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that it is something that becomes an active part of your communication strategy. It's something that people feel uh, connected with and they recognize that if they go to your website, they're going to expect that there's information, you know, at least from this past month or so as to what's going on with the church. So do your best to try to keep that information current, um, you know, even if it's just something as simple as like updating uh, uh, your sermons when you have new recordings and, or updating a blog post here and there, um, you know, mentioning what you guys are doing for events, anything to just let people know like, hey, this church is active and there's something happening here. Now, apart from that, too, also making sure that your site's connected to other sources, meaning like if you have social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever, anything like that, uh, that you do make sure that you link back to your site through those. So people who might run across your social media uh, also have a way to go back to your website. 
and then uh, also if you guys have any third-party websites. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, something happens where your church gets in the news, perhaps, you know, you guys have a, a ministry that's featured, or maybe, you know, somebody is uh, uh, looking for information and they, they reference you off of their blog or whatever the case may be. If anything like that comes up, those are great outlets to make sure that you have links to your website as well so people can find you through there as well. And that helps things, too, with, uh, uh, with uh, search engines and stuff like that, too, to see that there's other activity outside side of your own site that promotes you as well. And this is a big one too nowadays. Is your site mobile friendly? This is a question that you have to you have to make sure that you are covered on because nowadays over half of people visiting uh, websites are doing so through a mobile device, through a smartphone. They're doing it in a way uh, that they're actually be seeing it on a smaller screen. And because of that, your website needs to be set up to be mobile responsive. So no matter what you're doing with your website, there has to be a mobile responsive side of it to make sure that people can access it through there. And then lastly, who knows your website exists? This is a big question. Don't ever just set your website up and just assume people are going to flock to it. Make sure that your church knows about it. Make sure that people on your Facebook know about it. Make sure that you tell people, tell the world about your church website so people can come to it. That's going to not only let them know about it so they can, you know, of course, utilize it as a resource for communicating, but also it's a means of making, it's also a means of promotion and that will help uh, being able to be found later on through search engines and stuff like that. Again, activity is another big thing that helps uh, search engines make sure to index you higher. So, those are some common mistakes to avoid. Now, getting on to the next thing with preparation, I want to talk about gathering information ahead of time. So, uh, when it comes to websites, sometimes we, we go into the situation where we, we jump into the website, like maybe we just get set up with a new website builder, or um, somebody else is taking over and they're just jumping into the fray. However, without proper information and guidance from other people, you might find yourself getting stuck in some spots where you're, it's going to take you longer to make the changes uh, without contacting people ahead of time. So. Before we start putting the stuff in writing, the best thing to do is reach out to other members of the church staff, whoever that is, and gather information from them. So, uh, people like your senior pastor, your youth pastor, uh, anybody who's you know in, involved in the ministry leadership would be huge, of course, to be able to contact them, ask them, you know, uh, if they can write anything for the website. So the senior pastor, if he wants to uh, write a welcoming uh, message or a greeting, I mean, or a, uh, a devotion of any kind. Uh, the youth pastor, if he wants to write anything special for the youth ministries that are going on. Um, children's pastor, of course, for children's ministry, so you can get some information uh, from them on what you need. Uh, and also, you know, talking to administration, too, because they might have other uses and features that they'd like to see. And outreach coordinating, you know, making sure that whatever you're doing with your website, of course, not just isn't just for the people who are already attending your church, but what can you do to work with your team to make sure that people who are interested in attending your church come to it as well. Now, you might have to fill in some other stuff for them as well, but they can at least give you some groundwork to get started with. Um, and I know from experience in uh, putting up a church's website before, you know, there's a lot of times you want to give these people proper heads up so they really have time to uh, to commit to it and be able to write something for you that can be put on the website. And they know that it's reflecting what they would actually want it to say. And, uh, oh, and here's some examples, just like I was saying. So um, ideas, so like written articles are great. So if the pastor uh, is willing to do a devotional that he wants to maintain, that's fantastic, or a Bible study or anything like that, um, that's great. Or if you have ministry details that come from ministry leaders, uh, and then that's a, that's a great thing to get from them to put on the website. Now, another thing is menu organization. So with the menu, uh, you want to kind of think out ahead of time what pages you're going to want on your website, and you don't need to necessarily have a final draft right away, but you can get an idea of like, hey, like these are all areas of our church that I feel uh, deserve their own page or have enough going on that they should have their own page. Um, so you can figure that kind of thing out ahead of time. But then as you get all these pages together and you get your list put together, the next step you want to keep in mind is how are these going to fit on the website? How am we going to organize these so that it's easy to navigate and be able to find what people are looking for? So, uh, you know, of course, as you've seen on websites, a lot of time there is a top-level navigation where it's essentially the main page. This is uh, what appears on the menu at the top. You'll see there's just a direct link to a specific page on there. And then from that point, it goes on, and you see uh, 
things like student ministries, or so I'm sorry, this example here I'm using ministries, so I, here I have broken up and I have one area for student ministries, which is going to cover like my youth and my children's ministries, things like that, and I have a separate thing for small groups. So these are sub pages. So these are, uh, you kind of think of like how you're, you're splitting the hair further down. So we have ministries as our general overarching page, and then from there we have uh, specific, more specific types of ministries that we're looking at. Now, from that point, I can go through and kind of make these these uh, sub sub pages. Now, these are ones that may not necessarily cloud. Uh, these are ones that are more specific. I'm not going to crowd my menu with them because uh, I don't want people having to go through layers and layers and layers of pages in my menu to be able to see them. But I have my I have my specific ministries for these types listed out. Now, let's say uh, it goes even further beyond that. I mean, you can really go as far as you need to. It can go even further beyond that, and you have uh, your, uh, you have specific ministries within those. So things like Sunday school, we can break that down further if you have uh, specific Sunday school groups. You've got preschool, primary, intermediate, all those going on. And then small groups, I can have a spot for locations where I can then go through and provide information about each location. Now you don't necessarily need a page for all this information. This is just an example of what you can do. Now additional pages, uh, if you have a ShareFaith website, for example, additional pages will actually go through and you'll see like uh, these will be hidden pages so they're ones that are available in your uh, you know, people can get to if you link to them but they're not crowding your menu with them which is very important all right and then on top of that uh, gathering resources so now uh, I've talked about gathering information, but also resources. And by resources, I, I'm really mostly referring to things like uh, media, but we'll, we'll talk a bit more about some other things here. So what does your website need? Think of this ahead of time, you know, apart from just like what's it got to say, how's it got to look? The site layout is a big thing. You know, figuring out what your design is going to be, at least the general idea of the design ahead of time. You know, just something that, you know, is, it looks, it represents the look and feel of your church is mainly what you're looking for. And then going from there to build out. So you kind of have your skeleton, if you will, as to what it's going to start out like. Then think about what images you're going to use. Now, this is the thing where some churches don't necessarily know exactly what's the best approach on this. Images could be uh, things like pictures of your church building. They could be pictures uh, you want to have like things like staff pictures if you have those available. Um, pictures from events if you want to have like a photo gallery or if you want to be able to show off some of the things that are happening at your church. You know, it's great to uh, reach out to somebody in your church and see if they or someone they know is perhaps a professional photographer because you want to get some really nice looking photos, just a few of them that can go through and be able to uh, be able to go through and, and put those together on your site. You don't need a ton, and ultimately you can depend on your layout to see if you have anything that, uh, you know, to see if you have anywhere that you need to put those that will work better. Um, I definitely recommend some stuff, like at least one or two pictures of your church building, just so as people are coming up to it physically, they can recognize it. And as I said, I definitely recommend having staff photos as well. And then pictures from events are all great ideas. Um, now, also, you can get um, some stock photos if you want to, to help kind of illustrate purposes. You don't want to like make the expectation uh, you know unrealistic of like what your church looks like if you just have all these pictures of like people who are t at professional photo shoots, but you could use some stock photos to help kind of illustrate things and, and make a point and kind of provide atmosphere on your website too. Now apart from images, another thing to keep in mind ahead of time, uh, again you may not necessarily have all this out right away, but this is just stuff to keep in mind. Colors and fonts and things of that nature for design. So um, colors are, you know, a lot of times what I'll see is churches try to stick with something based on maybe a logo or, or something like that that they're using, or they'll use a color that might represent like if they're say like a, a coastal church and they, you know, they have their church by a sea or in a coastal town they might use blue to represent the ocean. You can think about all this stuff ahead of time. and I have a reference to an item that can help you uh, when you're trying to put your color choices together. Fonts are also a big one. Um, you know, obviously, like when you're going through, you want to kind of see what fonts are helpful and look at what has, you know, different things for, you know, like is it going to be a serif font that has like Times New Roman, for example, um, that has little uh, serif and kind of looks a little bit more uh, traditional, you might say. And then, or you can do sans serif, which is more popular in some design where it's, you know, it's just like more of a flat, like Helvetica or something like that. So you can go through and kind of play with those too. And that's not something you, you need to have nailed down right away, but it'll be helpful to you if you already kind of have an idea of what the scheme is that you're going for to fit with the rest of your, your appearance.
And then uh, lastly, other media. This, by this I'm referring to things like your MP3s that you need for your sermons, uh, video files that you're going to need if you're going to upload anything or showcase anything on your website as far as video goes. And then uh, also uh, another thing not written here, but is like documents. Like if you have anything, like if your church is doing anything like VBS and you want registration forms out, or if you want to have uh, some church flyers or bulletins available online, then gather all that together too so you can link to that and be able to have the option for people to go there and download something like that from your website. All right, so this is a big one that honestly, I, I mean, I think a lot of people are, are probably thinking to themselves like, yeah, okay, of course, you talk to your team, you, you talk to your staff, and you, you make sure that you work together on things. But honestly, this is a, a huge area where communication uh, falls in some spots, and it's just, you know, human error that we make sometimes, and it can lead to problems with your website as well. So communication between leadership especially is the big thing. So, I, you know, from an early time, you want to make sure that you establish the roles and responsibilities of everyone on the team. You want to make sure that everybody has a login who needs one to the website, that their roles are set up so they have access to whatever they need to do. So if you want to make sure, like if you have somebody who's just the administrator webmaster who does everything, then you have one of those, of course. But then if you want to also give access to, say, like the youth pastor to be able to edit the youth page then you want to set them up with something like that and make sure that you have uh, proper expectations of what they're going to do with that page. Um, you know, it's always good to meet every once in a while. Uh, you know, you can kind of choose at your discretion based on what your schedule looks like to talk about, hey, like, you know, what's going on in your ministry? What's going on at the church? Uh, what is out there that needs to be promoted uh, through the website? And as I said, so you want to set goals and timelines. You want to make sure that you are giving a proper, you know, in a way like a deadline and, and understanding, you know, that where that where that needs to fall. But especially, of course, if you have upcoming events, then for sure you need to make sure that you have information about that event up in plenty of time for people to actually be able to access that information on your website and go from there. So setting the goals, uh, you know, is just making sure that everybody understands what's going on with that and uh, making sure that, you know, people are all accountable to what they're being held to do. So then everyone in the loop is uh, just a matter of, as I said, keeping everyone in the loop. We, a common mistake is that we assume that everybody just automatically knows what's going on, you know, and we don't take into account that we might need to reach out to the secretary personally and say, hey, you know, we just talked about this at a meeting and we need to make sure this goes on the website. Or, uh, hey, you know, uh, you know that, uh, that uh, youth camp is up, but nobody has put a registration form for anybody to fill out for it. Um, things like that. You've got to kind of try and work together to, to keep an eye on things and make sure that stuff doesn't fall by the wayside. Again, a lot of churches I've seen will have this figured out and they do a great job. And there's a lot of churches that are still working in this area. So it's just another thing to keep in mind that this will affect uh, a lot of times how your website turns out as well because it's just another part of your outreach and communication tools. So I'm going to close this for now and I wanted to show you guys uh, some examples here. So let's look and kind of see what some churches are doing and how uh, what kinds of things are you know we really like what they're doing and also some of the things that uh, you know they might be doing that uh, we think might you know we might have some some suggestions to help them get a little bit better out. Now this is a great site. This is Calvary Bisbee, and so uh, this church here, as we go through, we can see they have a great big design with their logo on the front. So bam, as soon as you come to it, uh, you don't even have to scroll. You see, oh wow, Calvary Bisbee. No no concern as to if you're on the right page or not here. As we scroll down, they make a really nice use of these different sections uh, that kind of have like this color tone to them, so each one visually pops out from the other, and then. Uh, they can go through and uh, let's see here but if we click on one of these then it'll actually take us to a page on their site that talks a bit more about this so this is their welcome page this is very nice they have a very uh, very gorgeous picture of the area that they're in and you can kind of get a little bit about them they have an introduction to talk a little bit about themselves here and then up here in their menu you can see we don't have like a ton of pages uh, but it does have information that we would probably be more relevant to us right so, you know, like that we we're looking for right away so if I go to sermons, I can see all of the sermons they have uh, on their page already. And so these are just, I can tell this is just kind of like all the sermons they've done in the past. They have a, it's set to a pretty big list, so you can go far back on this. And then they have uh, a contact page set up. 
Now on the contact page, I see they have, again, another picture of their area. Uh, they've got some social media links, which is great. Uh, there's an email form, which is fantastic. I can tell you, uh, again, from experience that the contact form is such a big help to have on the website because if you do have people who are interested in learning more, um, you will get some folks who will just come through the door and that's it. Others will have questions before they attend, you know, things about like what your facilities are like and things that they can know ahead of time so they can plan. Um, so it's great to have a contact form or some type of contact information at least so that they can reach out and be able to ask those questions. And then uh, also they have a separate prayer request form too here, which is pretty nice because it tells you in a way that, you know, oh, okay, well, these, these guys would be willing to take my prayer request if nothing else. And that kind of just opens up a door where you can minister to them through that means. Now, the only thing I would say, uh, if we look back up at this, now the, they have another page here called Gatherings. And so this talks about the different, uh, different gatherings or worship times that they have together. So uh, now they do have a map embedded on this page, so you can find out how to be able to get to them. My, my only recommendation, and this is just a suggestion, I mean, a lot of the things they do here are, are great, and this is just a, a way that they do this, but just from my experience in going uh, back and forth to different church websites, it's great to have a map actually on the contact page as well. It doesn't mean they have to take this one down and not use it, but if I were doing it, I would suggest to have something like a smaller map available on contact as well. Because if you go from one church website to the other, and this is what I would recommend to you while you're in the building phases and you're trying to look for some inspiration, don't be afraid to see what other churches are doing. doesn't mean that you have to mimic everything that they do, and you might find some stuff that you don't agree with the way they're doing it, which is fine. But if you notice that there are certain trends, you're, you're likely to, I mean, then you're likely to see that other visitors will notice certain trends. So if somebody's looking for a church in your area, and they go to like six websites where the map is on the contact page, then it might throw them off if they come to your website and they don't find that information on there as well. You can't assume that you're the first church website that they're going to. So it's good to kind of see where uh, you might be able to, to fall into some of the similar patterns just so people can be able to easily navigate your site once you get there. But again, you can make it your own. You don't have to do everything you're doing. As I said, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. It's just a thing where if I was to offer a suggestion, that'd probably be the only thing that comes up on my list for it. So on, on to another church. Now this is a, a church that has a very different look here. Uh, you can tell already they've got more of a kind of an edgier contemporary feel to them is what I think of when I come here. You've got the bright red menu and you've got this awesome picture of these tasty waves and all this stuff. And you're just like, yeah, this is a totally happening church. Yeah, anyways, I, maybe I'm overthinking it. But you can go through and you can see, you know, what's happening here at this church. And as we scroll down, they have a very cool style to the way they do things. Um, you can tell by the way that they have stuff organized, their fonts and all that, that they are going for a more contemporary look and feel. And uh, I love how when we come down here to this part, uh, rather than even just linking to their Facebook or their social media, they're actually embedding it on there. So like, oh, wow, I can see their Facebook page right through within here. Maybe not the whole thing, but I can see what's happening on their feed. I have the opportunity I can like the page from within here. So there's different things like that that we can be able to, to kind of see what they're doing. Now, uh, also, as we go down further, we can see sermons, we can see uh, an option to give online, and here they have a map with their contact page. So all of that, you know, it looks fantastic. Um, you know, and here we can go and see about us, uh, underneath about us, they have a subpage for their beliefs. So if we go to this page, then it tells us a little bit more. And again, they have a very cool stylistic approach to how that's set up. And we can kind of check out what these other pages look like here. Um, so, you know, really here we, again, like I love the way they've got the social media layout. I'd say that's one of my favorite parts about this website. Um, the online giving, I feel like perhaps the imagery could be a little bit more, um, you know, it's more design, it's more stylistic, which is fine. Uh, maybe having something a little bit more uh, pertaining to, like, say, like a picture of a form on a phone or something like that, just so people can kind of more directly connect it with what it's trying to talk about. Um, but again, nothing really major, I would say. You know, the, for the most part, the website, I think, looks great. Yeah, I think they're doing a great job with it. Then onwards, uh, here's a website that has a, a very different layout 
it's more what you would kind of consider a, a typical, like, you know, I, I hate using the word typical, but more traditional like what you've seen in a lot of other uh, sites where they have, uh, rather than kind of have this one big long scrolling page, they've got stuff set up on two separate pages, which can be good and bad. Like this is good because they have already so much information here on the home page, um, but it doesn't feel overwhelming because it's really just in one area where I can check it out at. But I like the layout that they're using. Uh, I really like the use of imagery and the kind of way that they stack things to be able to have a, a lot of great visual ways to represent things, but at the same time it's not um, it's not like flooding the page to where I have to scroll on endlessly to do it. And again, they do a great example of showing the Facebook page here and seeing what that's like. And then as we bounce around, we can see some different things that they've got, um, you know, here under leadership. Let's see what this looks like. So they've got uh, a couple pictures of, so they don't even have necessarily the pictures of all the staff, which, you know, this is something too where, um, as I've found too, as I talk with folks, sometimes that that is a request that a staff member makes. Um, you know, not everybody likes to have everything about themselves out there on the internet. Um, so you do want to respect people's privacy. And that's another thing too, when you're talking to your team and you're saying like, hey, we want to get everybody's staff photo. We want to have bios for everybody you have to respect people's boundaries. Some people don't necessarily want all that. Um, or if you don't have all of that, like it's great because they have uh, the senior pastor and his wife here, and then they have a, an executive pastor here. So you can kind of see um, some of the more, uh, you know, more in charge people probably is who these are, like who, who handle more of the things that are going on in the church. Um, that's the idea I would get anyway when I come to something like this. But it's just totally uh, at your own discretion how you want to do that. And uh, this is great, too, because this is something important that a lot of churches might actually overlook, believe it or not. Sometimes we get so busy talking about ourselves uh, that we don't make any room on the site to really actually share the gospel and talk about things. Now, I understand when you're trying to be more concise and to the point, for what, and maybe a lot of people are, are really more interested in just learning more about the church, but it's still great to make some way that you can, you can still minister through the site. Now, I like how these guys have this Know Him page, and it talks a lot about uh, being, uh, being a Christian and what that's like, and they kind of talk more. They use a lot of scripture about uh, you know what it means to be uh, saved by saved and things like that. So these are great to have as well. And, and uh, sometimes ministries go overboard and, and they don't provide enough information about themselves and they, they do more of this, which I mean, ultimately, as long as the gospel is being spread, I guess it's not that big of a deal. But if you're really wanting your site to work for you and be effective at bringing people to your church so that you can get to know them and disciple them on more of a face-to-face -face basis, I definitely recommend having a good balance where you've got uh, you've got some online ministry here but also you are you are working for the purpose of, of trying to get into a, a, a stronger relationship with these people visiting your website as well. So uh, again, these are just some examples of some stuff that you guys can see. Now, these folks are all uh, using ShareFaith Church websites, believe it or not, even though they, they do have quite a few differences in the way that they're doing things and the way they look. Um, they're all picking designs from ShareFaith and starting from there to be able to build on and, and have the rest of their site built out. So um, you know, these are some, some great looking sites. These are actually a few of our testimonial sites where uh, people have, uh, we've really seen people do some great work on them and we like to showcase them and, and show people what the potential is there. Um, now with ShareFaith websites, uh, you know, this is just my, my little spiel here. I just want to let you guys know if you're in a position too that you are ready to make a change and you are a bit overwhelmed with the amount of work or whatever you or the time constraints that you have to deal with, ShareFaith actually offers a website migration process. We would be uh, able and willing to migrate all the information from your existing site uh, over to a brand new ShareFaith website design. Now that's something that's specific to our complete members, but I want to show you the process and talk a little bit about it here because it's it's really phenomenal that something like this is available to people. So this is my little my little system I built here to show you guys what this looks like. So the entire process takes only 20 business days to go through. Um, at first, you know, we receive your request, so we know it. Uh, you know, we have the information from you uh, that has all the details that we need to get your site. We verify that information to make sure we can access everything we need to for your site, your domain name, things like that. And then as we build out further, uh, we'll set up a temporary kind of de dev environment that everything can be put on put into. 
uh, our, our engineers then and our designers will work together uh, to make sure that everything's brought over, uh, things, you know, not just copying but also designing and optimizing things once it gets there. As you can see, uh, I just kind of put in a little key term there, science. Like, you know, I don't know how else to explain it. There's so much that goes on that they do within that time period. And then once it's ready to go, we'll even handle publishing and completing the migration for you. And then once it's finished, we'll give you everything you need so that we'll turn it over to you and you'll be able to work on it and maintain it from there. So, you know, that again, as I said, this only takes about 20 days. Now, you can compare that to the average it takes a developer and designer to launch a website is 140 days. So it's a huge time saver. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that's the average for you. I'm just saying if you're looking for somebody to build something from the ground up for you, that's what you're looking at. Um, and also, you could just say, like, hey, you know what? Rather than, uh, you know, put all this stuff on my plate, I know so many people in ministry are so busy. I'm right there with you. I'm involved in ministry at my church. And there's so many other things going on, too, where it's tough to find time and break away sometimes to do something like this. So that's why we have a process like this for our users. So ShareFaith has a few different plans. And as I mentioned, uh, we have, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about the one I mentioned a little bit earlier, our complete plan. But we've got three different levels of, of membership available. So we have the media plan, which is access to the over 70,000 worship media resources. Uh, it also includes a ShareFaith presenter software and online giving software. Now, on top of that, uh, we have a website plan. So if you're looking to uh, get started with a ShareFaith website and have access uh, to you know, getting your website and media, uh, this still includes everything that comes with the media plan, which is fantastic, but it also provides you a website too. And then last but certainly not least, we have our complete plan. So this covers everything that the previous two plans do, but we also in, uh, have website migration as part of the membership. So there's no extra cost for it. Once you're a complete member, that's part of your package. And we also even include a church mobile app. So not only do you get a church website, but you get your very own mobile app that users can download and install for iOS and Android devices. So. Uh, I just want to let you guys know, at this time, we'll go ahead and, and turn things over to Q&A. And uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, you know, anything we've talked about so far, if you guys have uh, comments or questions about things that you'd like to, uh, or things in regards to how to make your website more effective, or if you have any questions about what it takes to put a website together, you know, if there's anything like that, we'll be happy to, to do that for you. Is there anything that folks are asking about, Chris? Is there anything that folks are asking about, Chris? <laughs> Is there anything folks are asking about, Chris? Yeah, somebody uh, wanted to know if a migration can be done from an old ShareFaith template. Oh, so somebody is asking, so they have, so you're an existing ShareFaith member, and you have a website already, so you're looking to uh, find out what can be done about migrating an old ShareFaith template to a new one. Um, for that purpose, we'd have to look into that. It may not necessarily, that wouldn't necessarily need to require a uh, full migration, but if you want to reach out to our support team, we can look and see what kinds of things you're looking to accomplish and what kinds of designs you're going for, and we'd be happy to help kind of usher and see what we can do to guide you and, and give you some pointers in that um, and do what we can to help be a part of the process. So reach out if you go to support.sharefaith.com, and you can either call one of our uh, representatives or put in a ticket for uh, them to call you back or anything like that. And yeah, we'd be happy to talk with you more about that and see what you're looking to do and how it can help you get that moving along. Is there anything to avoid? Is there anything to avoid? Oh, so somebody was asking, is there anything to avoid when building a website? Well, I did talk about some pitfalls to avoid at the beginning. I'm not sure if you might have come in late. Um, there are definitely some things that you want to avoid. Uh, you know, I can actually pull it back up on here. My notes. So things like uh, you want to make sure that you watch out for uh, situations where you're not optimizing your site for search engines. So if you just put your site together and leave a B, you want to kind of go back through it and optimize it for SEO. That's something that I'll actually send some information about after this so you can kind of learn more about what it means to optimize your website for search engines, some practices for that, uh, some helpful tools you can use on your site for that. Also, uh, making sure that you're, you're careful to, uh, uh, to include things as it, as it goes with uh, 
uh, include things like your social media links, making sure your social media is linking back to your website, um, making sure that your site is mobile friendly is huge, uh, and then uh, also talking to people about it at your church, letting them know that it's there, encouraging them to use it, uh, maybe putting information on the website and saying like, hey, if you guys are interested in learning more about uh, this stuff that's going on this weekend, uh, be sure to check out our website to find more information, or hey, if you guys want to be able to uh, take part in a thing that the church has going on, our form is online. So there's things like that that you can do. Um, you know, I would say as far as like actual things on the website to avoid, um, I would probably avoid areas where uh, it's probably more design related. You want to avoid uh, colors that don't sync together. You want to avoid fonts that don't work well together. Um, you want to make sure that uh, what you're doing is aesthetic aesthetically pleasing. And again, that's another resource. I've got uh, a link to a helpful site that I've used several times when it comes to working on coloring and th things like that to go together. Uh, so I'll send you some information on that as well to help you guys out. Is there anything else, Chris? No? Okay, well, fantastic. So um, if you guys do have any other questions... Oh. Okay. If you guys do have any other questions, uh, we'll just hang out for a little bit on the chat for a while so Chris and I uh, can be sure to monitor that with you guys. Again, thank you guys so much. I hope that you guys got some good information out of this. And if there's anything else we can do for you, do not hesitate to let us know. Uh, reach out to us. You can go to support.sharefaith.com. Got tons of tutorials on there. Chris is actually our tutorial master. Um, and so he's the guy who's been uh, making sure that everything is up to date and showing all the recent stuff that we've been doing, all the cool things that have been going on at Sharefaith lately. And uh, yeah, if there's anything else that we can do, just let us know. Until then, I'm going to pray us out, and I'll let you guys go. Father God, thank you so much for this time today, and thank you for uh, just the, uh, the ability that the church has access to tools out there that can help them promote the message of your gospel, or that we can promote, uh, you know, that we can promote your kingdom and be able to uh, share your love with others, even if it's through, even th through things like print or digital or whatever it might be, Lord, uh, that that's another way that we can reach others. And Father, I pray that ultimately these tools will be a way that we can be able to come into contact with those people face to face and really have meaningful discussions with them and be able to have the opportunity to witness them and uh, disciple them, Lord. So, Father, I ask that for each of the people here that you would give them clear guidance and a clear strategy on what to do to proceed from this point. And, uh, Lord, I just thank you so much. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks again, guys. I uh, appreciate you coming out today. Again, we'll stick around for a little bit to answer any further questions, and uh, we'll look forward to the next one. Seeing you guys later. Have a great day. God bless you.